Hey gang, today we're going to take a look at uh, three different methods for handling the magenta stars that always seem to crop up when we process narrowband images in PixInsight or uh, any processing platform really. It's not a PixInsight thing, it's a color thing. Uh, so if you've done any narrowband imaging at all uh, using the SHO or Hubble palette, S2 is red, HA, hydrogen alpha as green, and O3 is blue, then you have undoubtedly battled with this. We love the SHO palette, we love the color contrast, or the contrast the colors give us, especially kind of down here in the hydrogen alpha uh, emission range. Uh, occasionally we'll, you know, we'll throw some SCNR at it and take out maybe some of the green, maybe make the background a little bluer. But, you know, generally we, we like this palette because it really does a fine job of showing us the individual and distinct signal from the three narrowband filters. Of course, one of its drawbacks is this. All this magenta rings and magenta color and pink, if you will, or purple color around all of the stars, even in, in many of the stars. Uh, it, it's just, it's distracting. It really takes away from the overall impression of the image. Well, there are numerous ways to handle this in PixInsight. Some complicated, some not, not so complicated. Uh, and they all have their, their ups and downs. But I've found three, really, that se seem to work for me. Now, I don't use any one in particular on any one given image. I don't necessarily always rely on one. Sometimes I'll use a combination of, of two or even all three of them. None of these things are my own creations. They're all taken from the PixInsight forums or friends on the Space Only subreddit over on Reddit uh, or, you know, just, just running across them as various blog posts, whatever. Uh, so none of this is my own work, but these are the three methods I find that seem to pretty reliably handle magenta stars in narrowband images, uh, and they offer some really good starting points for, you know, later tunes and tweaks. So we're going to run through three of them here real quick. Uh, before we do, we're going to start with our original frames. These are integrations from my most recent target, uh, NGC 7822. And I'll just apply a quick, uh, we'll do it this way. I'll just apply a quick standard STF to these. Note that I have STF linked to whatever the active image is. So here's my O3 data. Here's the S2 data. Here is the hydrogen alpha data. Now the first thing we're going to cover is maybe kind of try to understand why we get these magenta stars in the first place. The typical combination for the SHO palette is very simple, SHO. S2 is red, HA is green, O3 is blue, hence the name, S SHO. The problem, of course, here is that in nearly all cases of narrowband imaging, or at least in many of them, your hydrogen alpha signal is much stronger than either of the other two. You get a much higher S, uh, SNR, you've got a much higher signal in hydrogen alpha. Well, hydrogen alpha is being used as green. What that tells us then is that in order to bring the S2 and the O3 up to the same level of brightness as the HA, we have to stretch them more. But remember, S2 is red and O3 is, is blue. As soon as we stretch S2 and O3 more, to come up to match the green signal, if you will, of the hydrogen alpha, we start getting purple or pink in here overriding because they're stretched more than the green signal is, and that's where we get those big magenta halos around stars. We can demonstrate this pretty easily. I'm going to take my normal STF here on hydrogen alpha, I'm going to drag it over here to the histogram transformation window, and go ahead and apply that stretch to my hydrogen alpha. Now I'm going to disable the STF on, whoops, there we go. What am I doing? There we go. I'm going to go ahead and disable the STF on the S2 and the O3. Now remember, I've still got the same stretch that I applied to the hydrogen alpha. I've got that same stretch here. And I'm going to go apply this to the S2, almost nothing. And I'm going to go apply that to the O3, even less. So what we just told you real quick is a stretch that worked just fine to reveal hydrogen alpha data reveals very little in S2 and almost nothing at all in O3. There's our issue. O3 and S2 have to be stretched further. 
and we can kind of go the other way as well. We'll stretch our O3 here and then clear the STF out. So now we've got these stretched and I'm going to undo the stretch here on hydrogen alpha and I'm going to apply that same stretch that we had. We're going to keep that stretch. I haven't changed the histogram here. We're going to keep that stretch that we applied to O3 and put it on hydrogen alpha and you see very quickly what we get. Uh, a mess because we brought, we've clipped the blacks, we've brightened up the midtones way too much. So you know there there is the the primary cause of our issue here is that we have to stretch the hydrogen alpha much differently than we stretch S2 and O3, and as a result, we get the more dominant, the more stretched red and blue signal. So we've stretched all of those. And that was just a quick, you know, standard SDF stretch. Obviously, we're not worrying about details here. We're just trying to handle some magenta. And we're going to go ahead and run Pixel, Pix Insight here, or excuse me, Pixel Math, to combine these. And we get what we expected, our nice magenta stars here. So I'm going to make three copies of these. We're going to call this one SHO. PM for pixel math. We'll call this one SHO color mask. And we'll call this one SHO invert. Those will be our three methods for dealing with these annoying magenta stars. All right, so we'll go deal with color mask first. We'll use the color mask tool. Now this uses a script native to PixInsight. You'll find it under Utilities, and it is called exactly that, Color Mask. Uh, now what Color Mask does is Color Mask attempts to create a mask based on the color you have chosen to mask. Uh, it works. It works on hues, and it gives you a start hue and an end hue, and you can use these sliders to say, okay, I want you to mask everything between 75, hue 75 and hue of 146. Uh, it also conveniently has uh, six preset buttons, RGB, red, green, and blue, uh, and then CMY, cyan, magenta, and yellow. Since magenta is what we're after, we're going to try it first. We're going we're gonna to try the basic just magenta uh, default button here. You have your choice of chrominance or lightness mask. In this case, you're looking to do a chrominance mask because you're looking to get all of these colors, not you know, not based on, on their brightness here. So we'll run that. It doesn't take long. And it produces a pretty nice mask, actually, of the magenta colors in the stars. Now, one thing that you will notice when you use that tool, if you go stretch this mask a little bit, you'll find that it is also picked up some of the magenta color within the nebulosity that we would like to keep. We don't want to get rid of that color. That's that, that's legitimate. Or maybe we do. You know, kind of kind of depends on you. Uh, but typically, what we're after is just what's around the stars. So usually, I'll come in here and adjust this mask a little bit. Probably would actually do a better, more tedious job in normal circumstances. And we simply apply that mask to our combination. We're going to turn off visualizing the mask because that's really annoying. And we can use a large number of tools. We'll start with a really simple curves transformation here. And we'll oops, there we go. And we'll adjust saturation. And all we're basically going to do is just drop the whoops, hey, why don't we put a preview on here? Here we go. And all we're going to do is just drop the saturation of the masked parts. And we'll wait while Preview thinks about this for a while. There we go. And we see the pink coming out of the stars fairly nicely. That color mask did not do too bad of a job. Not a bad job at all. Now we have lost some color up here in the top right corner because that remember that mask picked up some of that so again you might want to be you know more careful about tweaking tweaking that mask but there's using color mask to get rid of the magenta halos around stars now it does leave a desaturated halo around the stars 
and if you zoom in you can really see that so you may want to have you may have to work on addressing that but there's your first method of handling magenta stars and we'll set this sucker over here to the side and then now we'll go grab the PM one pixel math this is method number two there is a really nice pixel math formula that showed up on the uh, uh, PI boards oh, a year or two ago uh, and it it is a fairly simple formula whoops but it's not that one it's that one there we go and basically all it does is says okay leave the red alone and the blue alone all right that's all this means uh, we're basically saying when we apply this you'll notice that it's going to replace the target image so we're basically saying replay re replace all the red in string T the target with channel 0 which is red in other words don't do anything to it same for the blue replace everything in the string T the target image with channel 2 it's channel 0 1 and 2 are red green and blue so replace all the blue with blue replace all the red with red yeah, we're not doing anything to it all this formula is doing and it looks a little complicated but all of that formula is doing is basically saying hey if the green is below the red and blue bring it up to them all right well where's that the case that's the case here in magenta green is green is is well less than the combination of red and blue since it is we're going to bring green up to it and that should bring us to a more neutral white color uh, you can either mask your stars or just run this against the whole image. kind of depends on how much magenta you have elsewhere that you may want to protect. But we'll just run it against the whole image. It's a very quick fix. Bam. Gets rid of our magenta colors all throughout the stars and has a little bit less of that desaturated ring, although it does kind of leave some speckling maybe in some of the halos that the uh, mask method did not. So there's the pixel math, and you can find that formula. I'll make sure to put that in the, uh, uh, in the description of this video, so you can just copy the formula straight over. But that is the pixel math method. And then finally, we have my personal favorite, the invert method. This one is just absolutely uh, ridiculously simple, and actually came to me from... Uh, a friend over on Reddit, Spastrophoto, Adriano is his name. We like Adriano quite a bit. He's a master at this, been doing it for better than 30 years. Uh, what we're going to do is we're going to go invert the image. That's Control I or Image and Invert. We're going to take our color image, Control I, and simply invert it. What you'll notice pretty quick is all those magenta rings around the stars, magenta halos, Look what color they are now. They're green, of course. Magenta inverted is green. And what removes green? Our good friend SCNR removes green. So we're going to take the inverted image. We're going to SCNR the heck out of it. And then we're going to control I and reinvert our image. And our magenta stars have gone away. This does probably the nicest job of leaving the halos intact and not desaturating them too much. Uh, probably the nicest. However, it probably does the poorest job of retaining the some of the sharper not so magenta colors in some of the other stars but it is an incredibly quick and simple way to remove magenta stars so now what we're going to do is we're going to take a look at the three methods here and we're going to go close up on one particular small open cluster up here in the top right corner and we're going to take a look at that cluster in all three of these so that you can kind of see the difference in the colors that you're left with in the other stars. All right, so there's our color mask one. And then finally, here is the inverted and SCNR method. All right. So here's our pixel math method, which used this pixel math formula to remove magenta. Here is our color mask method, which used the color mask script and then desaturation to remove magenta. And here is our inverted method, which simply inverted the Im image and ran SCNR against green. Uh, again, you can see that you know it kind of depends on which one you're looking at. There's some desaturated halos here that aren't present in the other two. 
uh, there's probably some more crunchiness to the halos here that isn't so much here. This one probably hasn't done as nice a job of retaining some of the sharper colors and contrasting colors within this star formation. So again, they all have their ups and downs. Some are easier, some are more difficult, some do better or worse jobs uh, with the resulting uh, non-magenta halo uh, around the edge. And it may be a combination of some or all of the above that leads you to the results you're looking for. But that's three very quick ways to at least begin addressing the magenta halos around stars in SHO narrowband images. Hope you enjoyed it. Leave comments or questions below. Talk soon.